सो वेलकम बैक क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट्स इन अवर केमिस्ट्री क्लास एंड एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट टूडे वी हैव टू स्टार्ट न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज वाटर and this is the very first lecture of our new chapter water now dear students water as i have gone through it so most of the part of it will be 95% of this chapter i think you have studied and it's basically a purely a theoretical cha chapter because if you go through it you will find water the occurrence of water in free state in combined state then what different types of water we can say distilled water treated water and so many types pipe worn water chlorinated water so these all of you must be knowing then why water is not an element a compound so we have studied a number of times these things in 8th class also elements compound and mixture then we have hydrated and hydrated efflorescence deliquescence hygroscopic all these if you remember we have studied in so detail in eighth class then water of crystallization then soft water hard water causes of the hardness of water then how this hardness can be removed drying agent desiccator so many things so it's just a recap a revision the only thing the only thing which we have to study and the only thing which is the conceptual in this chapter is solubility solubility curve and the effect of temperature on solubility on or solubility curve and we have some numericals over it so that is what we have to study the my focus will be on those things mean solubility solubility curve and some numerical part of solubility now my dear students there is one advice and one suggestion and i hope you will follow that please go through the chapter and try to read by yourself so and it just it will be just a revision for you so that you understand it very easily and it will be covered more important things you have understood all the things uh, already it will be uh, revision it will be covered so it will be learned by you so but as i have to deal with each and every topic so i will definitely i will do it and i am going to start it at water what is the molecular formula of water what is the molar mass molar mass of water and what benefit does it have over and uh, what is why is a compound why is not an element so many things so let's start the chapter students molecular formula of water h2o chemical name dihydrogen oxide commonly name as water molar mass this h2o is 18 so you have done it so many times 2 into 1 plus 16 that is equal to 18 now water has this structure this is the correct form of this distorted structure and we have we basically go for this type of structure now this is a single covalent bond one of atom of oxygen two atom of hydrogen they are joined by because oxygen has the atomic structure uh, sorry electronic configuration of 2 6 and hydrogen is the electronic configuration of 1 so one one sharing of electron takes place how suppose we have to represent it the valence electrons 1 2 3 4 5 6 this on the all the oxygen valence electron of oxygen then hydrogen already we know that we have studied hydrogen goes for duplet rule so as far as hydrogen is considered so see the duplet rule of hydrogen is being fulfilled and oxygen two electron 2 plus 2 4 because sharing of one one electron so we will count two two four six eight so this way the octet rule of oxygen is also been completed therefore we have this structure of hydrogen covalent structure so this is the complete now occurrence occurrence all of you know the occurrence 
combined state, free state, everybody know what percentage the earth covers. That is all the practical part. I'm not going into detail of it. You can have it from your book very well, and you have studied. You are studying from very sixth class. Now, water exists in all the three states of matter. That is solid, liquid, and gaseous. It's very well known to you. Solid. You can take the example of ice. Liquid. Water, which we drink. Water present in sea, river, etc. Rain water, and gas. It's the water when it's being in evaporated form. It's the the gas state. Now, water cycle. All of you know about the water cycle. How this cycle goes on? The evaporation. Evaporation goes and takes the form of cloud, and again it comes in the form of rain, and this way the water cycle goes on. Now we have we have a one point that why water is considered an element and not considered an element and it's considered a compound. Definitely, it is considered a compound. So, what is the reason? We have studied it so many times in the eighth class when we are studying elements, compound, and mixture. Now, let us see why water is considered a compound. Water has the molecular formula of H2O. Now, what is it? Is if we go for the definition of a compound. So, what is a compound? A compound is a combination of two or more than two elements which are combined in a fixed proportion by weight. Which are combined in a fixed proportion by weight. So, that is the definition of water. And it should be a pure substance. Right? It should be a pure substance. So, here what is water? See, it is composed of pure substance. Which are the, what are the pure substances here? The elements. Hydrogen and oxygen, they are the pure substances. And how it is in a fixed proportion by weight? Because 1 into 2, if you go for the ratio, 1 is the atomic mass of water, uh, sorry, hydrogen, into 2 atoms of hydrogen is 2. 16 is the atomic mass of oxygen into 1 is the number of atoms of oxygen. So, it is 2 is to 16, that is 1 is to 8. So, this ratio is everywhere, it is fixed. Whether it's the water which we drink, whether it's the river water, whether it's the rain water, whether whatever be the source of water, sea water, whatever be, it is fixed, that is, it will be 1 is to 8. So, therefore, it is not an element, it is a compound because it is fulfilling that property of compound that it should combine in a fixed property by weight. Now, second point, this was the first point. Second point, he, we, uh, and we say about compound that whatever the constituents are there in any compound, when they are in independent or whatever from the elements which are made, they lose completely their identity. They lose completely their identity and they form a new identity. And they do not resemble the characters of what they were as individual elements and now after being a compound, they are showing. For example, water, it is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. So, both hydrogen and oxygen have a unique property that they are useful for combustion. Hydrogen also and oxygen. Hydrogen is a combustible gas and oxygen is a supporter of combustion. But what about water? Water are used to extinguish fire. So here it is a supporting of combustion, supporting combustion or it is a combustible gas, but here it is extinguishing the fire. So so many properties, you study the individual properties of hydrogen, oxygen and individual properties of water as a compound, they will not match with each other. So, these are the some uh, properties by which we can say, yes, water is, a com water is a compound, it is not an element. So, dear students, the, uh, after that, uh, we have to study about uh, uh, water, we have to say that pipe 
warm water, distilled water, natural resources, natural sources of water. So purest form of water is distilled water, also you know. And one important uh, use of it is in analytical chemistry. Analytical, what is the meaning of analytical? Means analysis, analysis of compounds, of what it is made up of. So we say in qualitative analytical, qualitative analysis. So what is qualitative analysis? Qualitative. So distilled water has its use in qualitative analysis. So qualitative से मतलब होता है कि ये पता करना है कि suppose that we have NaCl or we have got it as an unidentified substance and now we have to identify we have to recognize it or identify it from which which ion it is made up of what is the cation and what is the anion that is the known as qualitative analysis for example we have a salt of sodium now we have to identify we will be given the salt that this is the salt now find out from which cation and from which anion it is made of so this finding out the cation and the anion of the unknown substance is known as the qualitative analysis so in the laboratory works distilled water is very very helpful and is useful now there is pipe bond water chlorinated water so what is pipe bond water so it's a very as the name suggests is a very simple meaning pipe bond water is just the water which is made available to end users or the end customers which are we through pipe is pipe bond water means the supply of water through different different pipes bigger pipe smaller pipe to us to the end customers is pipe bond water what is the usefulness of that pipe bond water it is being safeguarded from so many impurities so more or less we received treated water as a drinking or as a household purpose water that is the pipe bond water which is supplied by pipe after treatment after certain treatment that is pipe bond water then we have that chlorinated water it is also used for so many purposes a small amount a small amount and allowed permissible amount as by who or whatever the agencies are there they are can be used for safe drinking so this is all about the critical portion of uh, water which we have to study as per our uh, bookish chapter now we have to study about what is solute what is solvent and what is solution then saturated super saturated so one by one we will study and then we will go to the main topic that is solubility so let's hope to start with this solute solvent and solution now before going to uh, what is solute what is solvent what is solution and proceeding that topic i think i will start in the next session but a little bit uh, information you know why water is a universal solvent that we can just have it water is a universal solvent because more or less it can dissolve each and every substance each and every substance in it it may take a few seconds may take a minute or may take a century as you remember you have studied in 8th class now what is the reason behind it so i am telling you uh, because if i will go in very detail you will not able to understand because it's not beyond uh, it's not at your level water there is a dielectric constant so that dielectric constant of water that dielectric constant so allows the electrostatic force of attraction to weaken so suppose any substance is being poured into water any substance this pencil this paper the whatever be salt is dipped in water so that dielectric constant which we will study in physics what it does it weakens the electrostatic force of attraction of that particular substance 
So the bond is broken. They go into ion, they, they dissociate in their ion form, and so it is easy for them to dissolve. So this process takes sometimes even seconds, sometimes minutes, sometimes so many years or not. Therefore, why water even it can dissolve the electrovalent compounds, inorganic compounds due to this. So due to this factor. Though we can say that water is a universal solvent. So dear students, and that's all for today. And uh, next we will start that solute, solvent and solution and further related topics to it. So thank you very much.